Hi there everyone, it is currently the 28th of September 2011 and out here in the Western Pacific and Eastern Asia today, a very active day, not only in the tropics but also in the polar westerlies up here, you're starting to see that transition to the autumn season and that is evident here in this area of developing east of Honshu, actually a fairly significant low right now, bringing some high waves and gale force winds up and down the coast of Honshu here, a pretty strong surf associated with this and it is not tropical related this has some upper level support so it's more of a baroclinic system rushing quickly off towards the northeast but what I really want to mention with this is that we are in September and even though we have these tropical systems down here towards the south starting to transition over towards that uh, winter season here and that is evident with another low moving in off of China and this is going to be running Japan here over the weekend bringing rain showers likely on Saturday across much of Honshu but the main thing I mentioned that system is that behind that an area of high pressure is going to start to ridge in from the south and that is going to have a major influence on the two tropical systems down here towards the south by the weekend and into early next week and mainly that's actually going to affect here our new tropical storm Nogi. Now I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right but uh, correct me if I'm wrong but I do believe it is tropical storm Nogi here now moving off towards the west about 45 gusting up to 65 knot winds right now so it is that tropical storm strength with about a 990 HPA at the center of this system. There was a very weak weak pinhole eye in the center of the circulation earlier today it was only visible though on microwave imagery not very evident on visible and infrared imagery so that kind of indicates that it's still disorganized and trying to get its act together due to some moderate vertical wind shear up here towards the northwest and actually if we pull up the wind shear chart here you can see what I'm talking about about 30 to 40 knots up here up towards the northern portion of the system and that's why you see a lot of this outflow going up towards the north and actually connected with that area of low pressure we were talking about earlier earlier off the coast of Japan but under the center of circulation though about that five to ton knots of wind shear so that's allowing for the system to continue to develop and see a gradual increase in intensity as tracks west into higher sea surface temperatures which is going to allow this system to develop more but indicating here in red this is above 30 degrees Celsius so very uh, good for development as far as the system as it continues to track west towards the Philippines where by no margin do they need any more rainfall across the zone there. Now this is a trim a satellite indication here of the overall rainfall that took place across Luzon noting upwards of about 300 millimeters in much of the uh, central Luzon and noting actually in Subic Bay there was a report of upwards of 435 millimeters of rain during four hour period the Nessat tracked over the Philippines dropping all of that rainfall but also with Nalga here moving behind that that is going to be a very devastating situation situation as all this ground out here is already saturated across Luzon and with the rain showers coming from this next tropical system that water is not going to have anywhere to run. You're already seeing flooding out there but with the ground already saturated it's basically going to be like pouring water on pavement. It's all going to run somewhere and it's going to run, run into the rivers and the low-lying valleys which are going to overflow and cause flooding across the Philippines. So if the system does remain on track where it looks like it's going to be going and that is to the west following Nessat out here, you're still going to see a lot of the rain bands here along northern Luzon if it takes actually takes this exact track which is just off the coast. But noting this cone of air extending all the way from Taiwan down towards almost the metro Manila area and I would likely think that the storm is going to track a little bit farther towards the south actually over Luzon due to that cold surge I was mentioning earlier at the beginning of the update coming in from the north by this weekend which is on the first and second that could ridge on this system and push it farther towards towards the south and that's actually what JTWC is looking at with the system as they expected to track basically due west but then start making a dive towards the southwest here in the long range by the second due to that high pressure ridging in on it so we're going to continue to watch the system as it tracks off towards the Philippines hopefully it misses the bulk of the mainland here and tracks through the Luzon Strait you'd still see a lot of rain showers out here but it would not be to the intensity as would be expected if the system does increase up to its typhoon strength and clips a party here so let's hope that it does remain offshore but at this time it does not look like it will do so it will just clip the northern coast here and bring all those rain showers yet again here towards the Philippines.
as it tracks here west behind Nesset. Now Nesset is actually moving towards the west also following the monsoonal flow which has been hitting much of Indochina recently producing a lot of rain showers out there and actually over 100 deaths been reported in the past months and I would not be surprised if that number is actually even higher than that over here in Thailand but also Vietnam seeing about two, southern, two dozen deaths here in the past two weeks due to monsoonal rains out there and not the mentioned tropical storm Haitong that made landfall here just a few days ago well with this next system heading towards Hanai here and then on to Vietnam that threat will be ever increased yet again but right now tropical storm or excuse me typhoon Nesset here is moving off towards the west northwest it is expected to make a landfall here again around Hanai here on the evening of the 29th before moving on to Vietnam but one thing I want to note with the system it is still very expansive those 35 knot wind radiuses extend several hundred kilometers beyond the center of circulation you do see a little bit of dry air actually being worked into the center of circulation but overall though there's still a lot of moisture down here towards the south already seeing rainfall over much of southern Vietnam right now actually and you're still seeing rainfall in parts of the Philippines as the system tracks away so it's still a very intense system about 65 gusting up to 95 knot winds right now a 970 70 HPA uh, for the minimum pressure that is filling right now though so you are seeing a slow weakening with it due to some vertical wind shear up towards the north here but that is actually being countered by the warm sea surface temperatures in the system and also this abundant inflow of moisture from the south but since the storm does like it is look like it is going to miss Hong Kong here you're still going to be seeing some rain bands up towards the north because of the wide expanse of the system and this is actually the current radar as of 1748 Hong Kong time you're seeing this band move onshore right now you do actually have some heavy precipitation in here and with that it's going to be some pretty gusty winds so in there in Hong Kong even though the system is tracked towards the south I would not be surprised if you do see some high winds out there and also some pretty intense rainfall at time overnight tonight and into tomorrow and here though moving on towards a look at Nesset and its track and this is what I'm noting about that wide expanse of the wind field pretty large circle here of that 35 knot winds extending out from the center of circulation and also you have a pretty large circle of those typhoon strength winds out from the center of circulation so it's still a very large system a lot of moisture with it and with that it's going to be that flooding potential across southeastern China and on towards Vietnam in the long range but the system is expected to maintain typhoon intensity before making landfall on the evening of the 29th or actually tomorrow evening uh, at about 75 gusting up to 90 knots at that landfall so still a fairly intense system about the equivalent of a strong category one weak category two hurricane as it tracks off towards the west northwest here so another system we have to continue to watch here not over by a long shot as far as effects across land masses here even though it already did track over the philippines i know you there in the philippines are already looking ahead towards the next system but this is still a very active one out here. But for right now, I'd like to leave you here with this three-day satellite loop, just showing that development of Typhoon Nessa as it ran across the Philippines here and now off towards the west-northwest, and also the other systems that are continue to plague this entire region right now with four separate cyclones out there right now continuing to produce a weather across the western Pacific. So a very active time right now, and I would like to thank you for watching the Western Pacific Weather Updates here. Also, would like to thank Weathercaster Pat for also posting at westernpacificweather.com, and that that kind of extends out to other people as well. If you feel like you can contribute with these video updates, please let me know and uh, feel free to write me an email at westpacweather at gmail.com. So thanks again for uh, watching everyone. Please stay safe out there and we will continue to watch these systems as they approach. All right. Good night.